A delegation of the government of Venezuela arrived this Friday in Mexico to resume talks with the opposition. Bolivia's Chamber of Deputies passed a law guaranteeing the implementation of results of the population and housing census, those demanding peace and the suspension of strikes in Santa Cruz. Uganda authorities announced the suspension of school activities as part of the health policy to prevent the spread of Ebola. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Luis Alberto Matos from the Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. A delegation of the government of Venezuela arrived on Friday in Mexico to resume talks with the oppositions. After arriving in Mexico, the president of the Venezuelan parliament, Jorge Rodriguez, presented the members of the delegation of the government of Nicolás Maduro. Rodriguez insisted that the Venezuelan government delegation is committed to peace, dialogue and prosperity. A run of dialogues will start this Saturday and there is great expectation about the discussion on the recovery of the legitimate resources of the South American country, which remain confiscated by the international financial system. They will also talk about the signing of the second partial agreement for the protection of the Venezuelan people. The presidents of Mexico, Andres Manuel López Obrador and Colombia, Gustavo Petro, agreed to convene an international conference of Latin American heads of state to rethink drug policy in the region. During a meeting between the two Latin American leaders in the Mexican capital, President López Obrador and his Colombian counterpart agreed to rethink and redesign a security and health strategy to deal with drug trafficking, a problem that has plagued both countries for decades. This after the two presidents in their first bilateral meeting recognized the vulnerability of their countries to discourage and agreed that the current anti-drug policy has been a total failure. During a meeting with the Colombian community living in Mexico, the president of Colombia, Gustavo Petro, stated that the American balance sheet from Alaska to Patagonia in these last 50 years is a disaster. In Mexico, at least 12 people have died after an outbreak of aseptic meningitis in the state of Durango. Epidemiological authorities are focusing their inquiry on identifying the source of the outbreak. Mexico's Public Health Undersecretary Hugo lopez Gatel says 61 contagions have been confirmed in Durango state and that the federal health authorities is coordinating actions with provincial medical care sections in the provinces of Acapulco and Guerrero. lopez Gatel said that the investigation will continue as long as takes as it takes in order to prevent the spread of the disease. Meanwhile, they are making sure care is provided to the affected patients. The Health Institute for Wellness and Durango State Health Services say they are reinforcing their teams of health professionals with, with new hires. Venezuelan President Nicolás Maduro received the Prime Minister of Belize, John Briseño, who visits the South American nation to strengthen bilateral relations. The visit aims to reaffirm the bonds of brotherhood, in addition to reviewing the map of bilateral cooperation. The heads of government emphasized that the alliances cover different areas such as culture and education. It should be noted that relations between the two countries date back more than 30 years, which have been characterized by comprehensive cooperation for the benefit of both peoples. In Argentina, a court of second instance rejected the accusation of Judge Maria Eugenia Capuchetti, who is investigating the September 1st assassination attempt against Vice President Cristina Fernandez. Fernandez had requested that Capuchetti be dismissed due to his, her refusal to investigate evidentiary elements submitted by the plaintiff, such as the manipulation of the attacker's cell phone or the statements made by the opposition congressman Gerardo Melman. Although the Porteño Federal Court rejected the defense's request, it qualified its sentence by ordering Capuchetti to order new evidence to corroborate or rule out the version of a witness who claims to have witnessed an incriminating statement by Melman. In Uruguay, different social collectives grouped in the feminist intersocial mobilized throughout the country against gender violence. 
demonstrators denounced the increase in femicides and the government's unwillingness to deal with the phenomenon. Demonstrators denounced that, according to figures from the National Observatory on Violence and Criminality, there were approximately 18,600 complaints of domestic violence in the first six months of the year, an increase of 11% over last year. In this regard, specialists warned that this year there were episodes that reveal a general increase in the brutality of violence, including against minors. In Brazil, at least three people, including a teenage girl, were killed and 11 others wounded Friday when a 16-year-old shooter opened fire at two schools in the southeast authorities reported. The shootings took place in a public school with elementary and middle school students and in a private school located on the same street in the small town of Aracruz, state of Espirito Santo, informed the state secretariat of public security in a press release. In this context, police forces initiated the corresponding investigations to find the identity of the people responsible. Our police forces with the judiciary and the public ministry, they worked together and succeeded in finding the author of these attacks. The perpetrator was a student of this school, a 16-year-old minor. This was a premeditated attack. There was a raid in this school and they found weapons, two weapons actually, a gun here a pistol and a revolver in the school next door. Let us take a short break, but first remember you can follow us on TikTok at the account at Telesur English, in which you will be able to see news in different formats, news updates and much more. All the stories coming up, stay with us. Welcome back to From the South. Bolivia's Chamber of Deputies passed a law guaranteeing the implementation of the results of the population and housing census, those demanding peace and the suspension of strikes in Santa Cruz. The project, promoted by the Banking of the Mo Movement Towards Socialism, received six votes in favor, one rejection and one abstention. The initiative includes the content of the decree that sets the census for March 23, 2024, and the redistribution of tax-sharing resources for the September of that year. It also includes providing census data for the reallocation of legislative seats. After the draft bill was passed by the Commission, the Deputy Chamber President, Jerjes Mercado, sent it to the Senate Chamber while expressing his hope that his approval will contribute to restore normality and end the violence in the Department of Santa Cruz. In Germany, about 200 Amazon employees demonstrated in Leipzig on Friday calling for better working conditions and higher pay. According to union spokesperson Ronnie Strake, protesting on days like Black Friday highlighted the increased stress on employees. He added that work stoppage, stoppages were planned at 10 of Amazon's 20 German warehouses and shipping centers. Trade unions and environmentalists in more than 30 countries have called for protests against the United States company on the annual Black Friday discount campaign. The campaign Make Amazon Pay accused Amazon of exploiting both the environment and its own employees and demanded better pay and the conclusion of binding collective agreements. The president of the Gironde Food Bank in southwestern France, Valérie Bolse, said the charity is confident in the generosity of the public as it began a three-day food drive to help those in need. We trust the generosity of the public. We had our best collection in 2020. Despite COVID, lockdowns, a lot of uncertainty, and people are very generous, so this year should be no different. It's difficult with inflation for everyone, but we are counting on the generosity of the public and donors. In 2020, we had a rapidly increasing demand. And before COVID, we had 18,000 beneficiaries per week at the food bank in Gironde. Today, we have over 22,000 beneficiaries per week, so there is indeed a very clear increase. In the United Kingdom, transport suspension due to railway workers' strike has started to have a negative effect on the population. Thousands of people had to change their travel plans due to the strike, carried out by train drivers of 11 train operating companies, demanding work better working conditions and a wage increase to cope with inflation above 11 percent. 
In response to the situation, the union's general secretary, Mick Whelan, who blamed the company representing the operating companies for the failure of the negotiations, extended apologies to passengers for the inconvenience caused by the 24-hour strike. However, he added that the employer's refusal to meet their demands leaves their drivers with no other option but to go on strike. Cuban President Miguel Diaz Canal concluded his visit to China, where he met with his counterpart Xi Jinping and other authorities, in addition to signing agreements to boost bilateral cooperation. After the talks with Xi, both countries signed 12 documents on cooperation in different sectors to strengthen Havana Beijing ties. Established 62 years ago and described by both sides as solid. The meeting also ended with a joint declaration that reflected the willingness of the parties to expand communication and relations in political economic affairs. He also valued as very satisfactory and above expectation the results of the trip to China as they exposed the support to the Caribbean nation in difficult times because the Chinese side show receptivity and recognize the resilience of the Cuban people in the face of adversities. The Chinese Premier Li Keqiang received this Friday the President of Cuba, Miguel Diaz Canel Bermudez, who ended his official visit to that Asian nation. In his official Twitter account, he expressed the importance of the participation of the Chinese business system in the revitalization of the Cuban economy and thanked for the gestures of solidarity. China on Friday rejected what it called unreasonable suppression on its companies following the British government's decision to ban Chinese surveillance cameras from its government departments. According to British media reports, officials have been told to disconnect those devices from the department's core network and to consider removing the existing system in whole. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Mao Nin said her government opposes the unreasonable suppression of Chinese companies by generalizing the concept of national security. And we have more news coming up after a final short break, so don't go away. Welcome back from the South. The Chinese government on Friday tightened COVID-19 restrictions in cities including Beijing, Shanghai and Guangzhou, as well as mass testings as the nation faces its highest amount of COVID cases since the pandemic began. The National Health Commission reported more than 30,000 new locally transmitted COVID cases on Wednesday, the highest daily figure since the coronavirus was first detected in the central city of Wuhan late in 2019. In Shenzhou, in central province of Henan, Authorities announced a five-day lockdown for approximately six million people. Residents were ordered to stay at home and carry out daily PCR tests. Uganda authorities announced the suspension of school activities as part of the health policy to prevent the spread of Ebola. The Ministry of Education ordered the closure of all preschool, primary and secondary schools as of this Friday, November 25th. This closure comes two weeks ahead of schedule in order to help stop the spread of an Ebola outbreak in crowded places after the confirmation of 23 cases among students. Parents and representatives consider necessary to do this given the health situation in the country. According to the World Health Organization, Uganda registered more than 150 confirmed and probable cases as well as 64 deaths from Ebola during the last week. Malawi's anti-corruption bureau has arrested the country's vice president, Saulo Chilima, over corruption allegations, according to a statement issued on Friday. Chilima is accused of accepting money and other items in exchange for awarding government contracts, the bureau said in a statement. The vice president would be taken to court, where he is expected to be charged with three counts of corrupt practices by a public officer. Footage from local media shows supporters of Chilima and the police, seemingly in a scuffle, as he was being taken into court for the formal reading of charges. 
The watchdog agency said Chilima was rewarded for assisting two companies linked to British businessman Sunet Satar to win contracts for which he allegedly received $280,000 and other items as a reward. On Friday 25th, Senegal defeated the host Qatar 3-1 in the match corresponding to the second day of the group stage at the al Thumama Stadium. On this occasion, al UCC's team won by dominating the match significantly. The match started with the control of the ball and looking for precision but without any pass to achieve a definite move, although gradually they were advancing down the flanks until Boulayadia managed to score. Later, Famara Deidu scored another goal and finally Bamba Dieng, who ended up sealing the match. Those the African were victorious in a match that they had in their hands but left some chances for the locals, who managed to score the first goal in the history of the country in a World Cup despite the defeat, thanks to the skills of Mohamed Muntari. The third match of the day was between Ecuador and Netherlands. The final result was 1-1, but for Ecuadorian team left a bitter taste because they played better than their rivals during a great part of the game. The Orange team arrived with three points after winning the first match against Senegal seeking their passage to the next round. On the other hand, Ecuador also arrived with three points after defeating Qatar. For Ecuador, the passage to the next round will be at stake when they face Senegal because both want to be in the round of 16. However, for the three, the draw will be enough for the Lions of Tairinga is a kill or die game. England missed the chance to qualify for the last 16 of the World Cup as Gareth Southgate's side put in a sluggish display in a nil-nil draw against the United States on Friday. They managed only one shot on target and could easily have conceded in the first half when the United States were in control for long periods at the Albite Stadium. For the third time in three meetings with the United States at the World Cup, England failed to live up to their status as favourites. This way, a draw in their final group game against Wales on November 29th would secure England's place in the round of 16, while a win would seal top spot. In recent days, the world's largest mural in order of the Armando Maradona was unveiled in Argentina. The Porteño neighborhood of San Cristobal, located on San Juan Avenue and Solis Avenue, a 40 meters wide by 45 meters high mural was unveiled on the 62nd anniversary of the birth of the 10. The artist Martin Ron was in charge of turning the work into the largest mural ever dedicated to the famous player who made history in the Argentinian national team and who wore the jackets of Argentinos Junior, Boca Newells, Barcelona and Sevilla of Spain and Napoli of Italy. The image shows Maradona at the beginning of the 1990 World Cup final in Italy with that expression that invites you to go forward. And just as the hearts of millions of fans leave the emotions of the Qatar 2022 World Cup, there is rejoins this sporting event with From the Field, a show that brings news, analysis, reviews and more to our audience. Don't miss it. Our show airs at 1 p.m. local time in Caracas and 12 p.m. New York. Remember, from the field, only on Telesur. We have come to the end of this news program. You can find these and many other stories on our website at telesurenglish.net. You can also join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Telegram, and TikTok. For Telesur English, I'm Luis Alberto Matos. Thank you for watching.